Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on conditional logic in Python. If you happen to be in class with me this semester in 365, conditional logic statements are things we will use all the time, all the time. They are so very helpful to have in your toolbox. If you just happen to fumble across this video and you're looking for help with Python, welcome. Hopefully I'm able to help you out along the way. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask me questions if you have any, any, anything that you need help with. So let's just jump right in and talk about it. So if you're completely new to Python, if you're completely new to using things like Excel and you've never worked in business or data analytics, you maybe you're not familiar with what a conditional logic statement is. So let's just start with that. Exactly what is a logical statement or a logical test? Well, let's talk about that. So a logical statement is something that you can create in, in Python. You can also do it in Excel or various other programs. But basically what it does is it is a expression that evaluates to true or false. Okay, so think of it like a test, and the answer to that test is true or false, or Boolean in nature. So examples, um, if your credit score is lower than 700, then you are not credit worthy. If you have more than 36 hours completed at a college university, you are eligible to be a second year student. Um, if you have $50,000 to put it down on a down payment, then that is enough to purchase a house. Basically, it's just an evaluation or an expression that evaluates to true or false based on whatever logic you choose to use. Okay, and we'll jump in and look at it, specifically credit score in just a minute. So now in order to create a logical statement inside Python, it's actually very similar to the way you would do it in Excel. You have to use something called a comparison operator. And the comparison operators that you would use in Python are very similar. Uh, they're the exact same, but the characters that you use to type them are very similar to what you would use in Excel, but they are slightly different. So the way that you express a comparison operator in Python is slightly different from Excel. So here's what I mean when I say that. So when you work with Excel and you want to say something like X is equal to Y. Well, if you wanted to say X is equal to Y, you would actually do just X equals Y. But when you're working in Python, you can't do that because using a regular equals key, just one equal sign uh, is how you declare a variable. So you couldn't do that. So if you're trying to relay equals to uh, the comparison operator to do that instead of a single equals is two equal signs right next to each other. So X equal equal Y is X equals two Y. Less than the same, greater than the same. Um, the other one that's different is not equal to. Okay, so if you are working in Excel, not equal to would be the less than sign in front of the greater than sign. Okay, uh, but when you switch over to Python, that is not the case. Instead, it would be the exclamation mark in front of the equal sign. And then everything else holds true. Okay, so just some basic concepts. It's okay if, if you miss some of that stuff because we're gonna actually do it in Python right now. So let's talk about it. Let's just jump into Google Colab and let's work on it in Google Colab. So the best way to learn how to do this is to do it yourself. So feel free to open up a, a new Jupyter Notebook in Google Colab, so a new notebook in Colab, um, and type along as we do this, okay? So let's just work on it. So what I'm gonna do is create a new cell, and in that cell, I'm gonna declare some variables. Now here's what we're gonna work on today. We are gonna buy ourselves a house. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an if statement to relay some logic to determine if we can buy the house, if we are approved for our loan, if we need a cosigner for our loan, or if we are denied for the loan. So let's go in and write some logic to figure out how that works. So now the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to write some variables. <clears throat> I'm gonna to need to declare some variables. So the first variable that I'm gonna declare is credit score. Now this would be the credit score of the person we're evaluating. And if you're not familiar with credit score is, it's just a KPI, it's a metric that is used in order to determine someone's credit worthiness. Usually the higher that number is, the better. The lower that number is, the less credit worthy you are. So we'll say that the current credit score of the person that's being evaluated is 700. So I've entered in credit score 700, okay? So now the next thing we need to do is we need to put our credit score max in. So what is the score that we need you to be higher than in order for you to be approved? So we'll say desired or we'll say um, minimum credit score. And that is a minimum credit score in order to be approved. So we'll say that the minimum credit score to be approved is, we'll say 650, okay? So our current credit score is 700. The minimum credit score to be approved is 650. So, so far, so good. Now we're gonna declare another variable here, 
Okay, so the next variable we're gonna put in is our maximum house. So the maximum amount that we can spend on a house. So we'll say our max purchase amount. And we'll say that that max purchase amount is, we'll go with a half million. That'll, that'll buy you a pretty decent house. So we'll say 500,000. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Then the last thing we need to do is we need to plug in our actual purchase amount. So the price of the house that we're actually gonna purchase. So in this we'll say purchase amount. And we'll say that the house that we're purchasing is 250,000, okay? So now based on what we've said, if you just use your business mind, this person is approved, right? Their credit score is 700, which is higher than 650. The max purchase they can buy is 500,000, which is um, the purchase amount that they are looking at is less than 500,000. So in that particular case, that person is approved. We know that just by looking at it. But why use your own mental power when you could use the computational power of Python? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write an if statement to figure out how to do what we just did. It's gonna look at the, the desired credit score and your credit score. It's gonna look at the maximum house that you're allowed to purchase and the amount of the house that you're going to purchase. And then based on that, it's gonna make ourselves a little prediction. So let's talk about how to create this logic inside Python. We're gonna use something called if. Okay, so we're gonna start off with if, all in lowercase, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our logical test, our expression, our statement, okay? And the logical test that we're going to use here is if the um, credit score, and that's capital credit, credit score is greater than or equal to the min credit score, okay? So if that's the case, we're going to do something, but we're not able to do that just yet. So I wanna stop at the end of this line to talk about what our next steps would be, okay? So after I put in my expression, after I put in my logical test here, right, which is if the credit score of you is greater than the minimum credit score in order to be approved. So once we do that, <clears throat> we're ready to move on to a value of true, right? So what happens if this is the case? What do we want Python to do? So before we're able to move on to that, we're gonna tell Python that that is the end of our logical statement and we're gonna do that by placing a colon there, okay? We're gonna do that by placing a colon there. Now, I know that I said credit score and purchase price amount, but I'm gonna start with a lesser if statement first and then I'm gonna work my way up to the bigger if statement in a second. So now that we've put our logical statement in, we're gonna hit return and we're gonna move forward, right? So now remember, in Python, space is syntax, okay? So in Python, space is syntax. So when we move to the next line, notice that it automatically indented, okay? That's letting the code know that, hey, this is gonna return a value. So we're not in our logical test anymore. We're now going to put in our return value. So in the event that your credit score is greater than the min credit score, then that person is approved. So now this is all we need for a bare minimum logic or conditional statement here, right? So if I simply run this right now, it's gonna tell me that that person is approved, okay? And if it happens to be the other way around, so say this credit score was 600 instead of 650, okay? So if I reset that variable and I run this again, now it's just not gonna say anything. See that? So it ran, but it didn't say anything. That's because I didn't put in any kind of value of false. So I didn't tell it what to do in the event that the logical statement evaluates to false, okay? And remember that these logical statements are Boolean in nature, so they evaluate to true or they evaluate to false. So let's continue to build on this a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna write the same if statement again, but I'm gonna modify it just a little bit. So now I'm gonna say, well, if the credit score is greater than or equal to the min credit score cutoff, okay? Remember, I terminate that line by hitting the colon, that lets it know that I'm done with my logical statement. I hit return. Notice that that is indented right here. That is in key, that is important. Remember, space matters, okay? So we're gonna then do print approved. Now we're gonna add something different though. So in the event that this person is not approved, the alternative is that person is denied. So if we want to put in a value of false here, meaning that if it evaluates to false instead of true, um, we can do that. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump down and we're gonna remove our indent. So notice when I first did it, 
it put me in line with print. We don't want to do that. We're not printing anything else. What we're going to do is move on to the next step. So we're going to jump back one and do else, just like so. Okay. Now, after that else, I'm going to put in a colon and then I'm going to hit return again. And now we are going to print something. We are going to print denied. Okay. So if their credit score is not greater than the min credit score cutoff, that person is denied. If it is, that person is approved. And in that case, that person is denied. Okay. So that's if statements in its basic level, right? Conditional statements in its most basic level. That's what you've got. Logical test value of true is the bare minimum. You'll usually have a logical test value of true and value if false. Okay. But we can add to this. Okay. We can add to this. So we can add to this by having multiple conditional logic instead of a single conditional logic statement. So remember I noted just a minute ago that there's also a max house amount that you're able to be approved for. And then there's the actual purchase price of the house that you are actually going to buy. So if we wanted to add that additional logic, we can do multiple conditional logic by using the logical operator and. Okay. So when you're working in Python, we have the options of adding and, or, or. And that gives you the ability to add multiple conditional logic, just like if you were using it in plain English, right? So if your credit score is higher than 650 and the house you're buying is less than 500,000, okay? So you have the ability to do that, no problem. You do that by adding uh, the logical operator and. Now, the easiest way to do that is to actually do it. So as I type this out, try to type it with me or see after I do it what it looks like and then try to do it on your own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the same thing again. So I'm gonna say if credit score is greater than or equal to minimum credit cutoff, okay? Now, this is where before I would just type a colon and move on to my next portion of the if statement. But instead, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take this away and I'm gonna type and. So notice that that's blue. That's letting you know that that's a reserved word. Now, reserved words are super cool in Python because one, they, they usually perform some kind of action. But then additionally, you can't use them as variable. So just seeing that that's blue is telling you that if I tried to decre declare a variable and I called that variable and, it would not work. And it's just a bad idea in general, okay? So what I can do, because I've typed and here, is I can actually type in an additional logical statement. So after I've done credit score greater than or equal to min credit score, I can jump in and I can say and the purchase house, the amount that you're purchasing, so the purchase amount is less than or equal to, uh, less than or equal to the max purchase amount. So by using the keyword and here, the logical operator and, it's giving me the ability to put in an additional logical statement. So now in order for this to evaluate to be true, right? Remember that uh, these statements evaluate to either true or false. So in order for this to evaluate to be true, then this statement has to be true and this statement has to be true. If either one of these is false, it won't work, okay? So in this particular case, after I put these two statements in, I can hit colon and then the rest of it is exactly the same. So after that, I can do print and if it's true, if both of those statements are true, then that person is approved. else that person is denied okay now we looked at this earlier and we just used our own brain and when we saw this we looked at it and said oh yeah that person's approved um, now I need to change it back to what it used to be so originally this was 700 so I'll put it back to 700 and I will run it again and now when I run this that person is approved now, what if that's not the case though? So what if their credit score was less than 700 or less than 650? So if I put that back to 600, I run it again, that person is denied. So it's working, right? It's working exactly the way we thought it would, but we can make it even more interesting, okay? Even more interesting. So I'm gonna jump up here and I'm gonna run this again. And there we have it, okay? So now I've put my 700 back. Okay, 
So I could actually do a couple other things here. So I could do multi-conditional logic uh, to make it even more interesting, right? So what if instead of it just being the options of approved or denied, what if we had another option where we had cosigner is an option, right? So what if, for example, your credit score is over 650, but the purchase price of the house is also over 500,000? right so credit score is over over 650 so that means we're good but the price of the house is too expensive so now we've got an issue well if that's the case we can actually modify this a little bit to add some additional logic that would give us a third outcome whereas right now we've only got two outcomes and we can do that by using l if so let me show you how that works so we know for example that if their credit score is good right so if it's higher than the min credit score and the purchase amount is less than 500,000, they're approved. But we could add an additional set of, of logic here that says, well, if their credit score is greater than or equal to the min credit score, which is good, okay, uh, and the purchase amount is greater than or well, we'll just go with greater than the max purchase amount. So let's just talk about what that is, okay? So instead of using else, like I did here, which gives me just a value of false, so if this evaluates to false, it gives me denied. I'm gonna add some additional logic here that says, well, in the event that that's not the case, we could have an additional outcome. So if credit score is greater than the min cutoff, so it's a good credit score, but the house costs too much, we could potentially add an additional statement here. So in this particular statement, what we'll say is, if that's the case, so you've got good credit, but you're trying to buy a house that's too expensive. If that's the case, we will say someone needs to be a co-signer. So you need to have somebody to help you with this loan, okay? And the rest stays exactly the same. So either it's approved, it's a co-signer, or, it is denied, like so, okay? So it's giving me the ability to have an additional set of logic. So I've got three outcomes using L if instead of two outcomes with, with else. Now, if I evaluate this, this person is indeed approved. However, what if I change the purchase price of the house to 525,000 or 520,000? Now, when I do this, that person needs a cosigner. So there you have it. Logical statements, uh, conditional statements in Python. Nothing to it. So I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a shout. If you're in class with me, you guys know how to get me. I hope you enjoyed this video just a little bit. Like all the young people say, like and subscribe. I really hope this helps you out. It brings me a lot of pleasure to do these videos and I will talk to you soon.